My name is Nick Thompson, and uh, we at UCLA have developed this tool called CASA. And before I get into CASA, I want to know a little bit about your guys' institutions and what you guys, uh, what you guys do. Um, so uh, who here uses uh, LTI in their classrooms? I raise a hand. OK, so some of you. Uh, who here does not know what LTI is? Okay, so I'll, I'll start from the beginning then. Basically, LTI, and uh, this, that's not what this slide is. Um, LTI is a mechanism whereby instructors can take a tool that they find on the internet and plug it into their course within Moodle. So, uh, just an example is Piazza. Okay, it's a really popular one, a lot of people use it. There's all kinds of different tools on the web that instructors can use. Okay, uh, Moodle supports the use of LTIs through a plugin called, uh, I think it's called External Tools. Um, what you, the instructor does is they go to this form and they fill out a whole bunch of very complicated, confusing, uh, technical information uh, such as shared secret, secret key, uh, launch URL, things that a lot of time the instructor has no idea what it is. They just know that they want to use this tool that's out there on the web and they want to plug it into their course, but doing that is, is pretty difficult uh, in the current implementation of, of Moodle. So what we did is we decided to create essentially an app store. And that's what CASA is. It's this, this bucket of, of collated and approved apps by your institution that are put into a single place where the instructor can browse this app store. That it, it's free. It doesn't cost money to, to the instructor. Um, and they click on an install button, and it, it puts it into their course. So it makes adding these LTI or external tools really easy. Uh, what the administrator does is they go, you guys, I assume you're the administrators, go out on the web, find the, the courses or the, the tools that your instructors want to use for their courses, and you preload these apps in your CASA instance. So let me talk now. Uh, so CASA is, is what uh, this is about. So what this sh slide is showing is that CASA is itself an LTI tool, okay? And CASA communicates with Moodle through LTI. Uh, what we did is we rewrote the external tool plugin, okay? We rewrote it, named it CASA, and uh, added some default configurations, okay? That's basically all we did. The external tool plugin was reworked in Moodle 2.8, so we took the, the 2.8 version of the external tool and we backported it to Moodle uh, 2.7, which is the one that we're currently running. So what, what does CASA have and provide? Well, it provides app discovery, curation and publishing. It allows the instructor to go to this app store and browse apps that they might want to use and put it into their course. Uh, now CASA does, it's a separate application. The, the server you know, has to be running on a server. You guys have to run it. It's, it's open source. We have the, the code on GitHub. You guys can download it today. It's, it's called Casa on Rails. And if you have the expertise on running uh, Ruby on Rails applications, you can download it, run it. And then once the instance of Casa is up and running, you connect that to Moodle, and, and you're off to the races. And I'll show you a, a little bit about how that works and uh, connects. Um, you know, I'm going to just skip all, all the slides here and go to a demo, since it's probably a lot more interesting. Um, Okay, so this is just a, a standard Moodle site. Uh, we have some, some custom theming, obviously, uh, and a banner warning me not to use Internet Explorer. Um, 
So here we have the, the Trinity and on button. I'm going to go ahead and do that. There we go. All right, so add an activity or resource. Here you see CASA, okay? Before I click on that, I'm gonna show you what external tool is so you could understand the, the challenge that fa faculty currently face. So this is the form that they're asked to fill out when they want to add an external tool to their site. As you can see, there's a whole lot of fields that are very confusing, and unless you know exactly what you're doing, you're not going to be very successful at, at adding these external tools. Um, So now I will add a CASA resource, and you'll see what happens. Well, it's not in a supported browser, so it doesn't look very nice. So, so CASA is loaded in an iframe. This, like I said before, CASA is an LTI tool. And you can browse these applications that are installed on our CASA instance or configured on our CASA instance. So I clicked on one LTI tool that we wrote ourselves uh, called Online Poll. What this tool does is basically it does what uh, iClicker does or all these other clicker technologies, but it's, it's online based. So if a student has a smartphone, they can go to this, this online poll tool and uh, uh, answer quizzes or polls or whatever in their classroom. So when I click add, ignore the, the, the output of the test server. Online poll is now a resource in the, the course that I just added. Okay, well. The re what's happening now is, is the, the tool that I added is HTTP, and it's having troubles loading it within an iframe because the site we have is HTTPS. Um, Well, it works in Chrome. <laughs> you guys are actually able to go to this site if you want. Um, the, the, if you want to log into this site and try it on your computers, you're, you're more than welcome to do that. The, the login uh, is special case login. So when you go to the site, uh, let me log out. So when you click login, at the bottom, click special case login.
and use instructor1, instructor1 as the username and password, capital I. And if you do that, then you can actually uh, add and browse the, the, the CASA instance, the, the app store, if you will. Um, the other thing I'm going to show you is the, the, the CASA application itself. So this is the integration to CASA that I, that I just demoed for you. The screen when I was on the integration part where we had to pick an application, this is what it should look like. So you basically click on an application. Uh, within, this is what's opened up in an iframe. So you click on an application, you click add, and then it adds it to your Moodle instance. So this is running on a server somewhere that you guys would have to host uh, or you know, use Amazon Web Services or something of that nature. Uh, there's an admin panel here that I'll go over the, the settings and, and what's available. Uh, so CASA is not a hub and spoke uh, architecture. It's a peer-to-peer -peer architecture, meaning we at UCLA have a CASA instance up and running. Well, this instance, if you look at the URL, is actually UC San Diego. So the UC San Diego is pulling from the UCLA CASA instance, as well as Berkeley. So you guys can each pull, bring up your own CASA instance and pull applications that are running in our CASA instance. It basically makes it easy for us to share applications with you and for you to share applications with us. There's some filters uh, to, to make the sharing easier, okay? I'm not gonna go over that, but it, you know, if you don't wanna see you know, an institution that has hundreds of applications or whatever, you can just change the, the filter so that you see the types of applications you want. Maybe those that are, you know, uh, meet certain qualifications or keywords or, or what have you. This is the configuration to connect CASA to a Moodle instance. So one concern might be, well, if you run CASA instance, what's going to keep other Moodle in applications from pointing to your CASA instance? Well, you get to choose which Moodle installations are, are connected to your CASA. And then the last one is, is the outbound peers. So this is where you're choosing who, who you want to allow to link up to your CASA. So if you uh, maybe run a, or you manage a system of schools, each school can potentially have their own CASA instance, and you have all those different institutions listed in the out peers, and you can connect to those schools by, you can share your applications to those schools through that, that, um, that area. Are there any questions so far? One, one sec there, he's gonna, Bob's gonna give you the microphone. microphone. Okay. So for the, uh, the polling app, is that available? It uh, is. To other people? It is, in fact, uh, one thing that I want to do is, so the, we, we're willing to host a CASA demo for anyone that wants to try it. Uh, we can't host a demo for this entire room because that's a lot of uh, servers. But uh, I've created a poll that we can activate right now and you guys can fill out this poll by going to onlinepoll.ucla.edu and uh, 
if you want to, if you want us to host a CASA instance for you for, for trying it out, uh, we're more than happy to do that. So let me just do that really quick. Right. I guess my question is more, can we get it outside of CASA? So if this is something I wanted to add, for example, state, uh, site-wide. Yes, and so that's what, that's what this demo is, is, okay. is going to do. All right, thanks. So this is online poll uh, edu. It's an LTI application that you guys can add to your, your uh, institution if you want. So I've, I've just created a, a sample poll. Um, wrong one. I'm going to open it up, uh, hide the results. So if you guys go to onlinepoll.ucla.edu and search for CASA in the cloud pilot, uh, if you want us to host this for you, uh, you're more than welcome to do it. It's not something that we're selling or trying to make money off of. It's really just a resource that we have and want to share with other institutions. A question over here. The question is, if, if you want to run Opt as your own provider, uh, that's a good question. Um, I, I don't know the answer to that. I, I don't think so, um, but I, I can get back to you on that. I'll, I'll post the answer in the, the course that I was given. Bob? Uh, the applications offered to uh, CASA, who develops them and how they've been vetted out? C can you repeat the question? The applications of offered through CASA who develops them and how are they being vetted out? I see. So that's up to your own individual institution to decide. So applications within CASA are put there by you, the administrator. Uh, there's hundreds, thousands of, of LTI-based applications. Uh, you go, you add the configuration variables. All the stuff that I showed you in the external tool, that's all preloaded when you install that application in your CASA instance. So this is just making it easier for the instructor to add that tool to their Moodle. Uh, so there's nothing that's preloaded in CASA. If you install CASA today, uh, it comes with nothing. You have to go and, and do the configuration. Or you can pull apps from other CASA instances if you're connected to other people. Bob, there's a question in the back. Hey, um, so basically it's a profile management system. It's just keeping the profiles of those other tools which you've decided to include within your CASA and make available so that people don't have to add in URL, keys, secrets and stuff. Exactly. So that's cool, very cool. I'm installing it at lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, it's not a knock against Moodle, but I think the, the implementation of the external tools is, is very difficult to use, and um, this hopefully makes it incredibly easy for your faculty. <laughs> yes, he said CASA should be in core, I agree. Uh, question up here and then back. Do you have Piazza uh, in CASA, and if not, why not? We don't, because CASA is new even for us. Uh, we just got it up and running on our test server, the integration to the test server uh, this last week. Uh, so, you know, if, you know it, it is vetted and it does work, but we're still doing additional testing and we're, we're in the process of that. Now, P Piazza, you know, being installed on CASA, uh, the reason it's not there yet is uh, like the other gentleman asked, you know, how do applications get inside of CASA? There's a vetting process that the institution has to decide whether they want it. 
UCLA has not made that decision that we want to officially support Piazza yet. Um, that may be decided upon in the next few months, but right now we haven't agreed to make Piazza easily accessible within CASA. There was a question in the back, Bob. Uh, what version of the LTI uh, integration does it use? Uh, like 1.0, 1.1.1, or is 2.0 even ratified yet? No, it's, so this, that's an excellent question. It uses one point, uh, what is it, 1.2, I think. Um, there's a fee, so there's a feature within CASA that is not supported in the external tool um, uh, prior to Moodle 2.8. And that's why we had to backport the newer version of the external tool. Uh, and that is uh, this, this thing called content items. So if you go to the external tool, there's a content items uh, checkbox. Uh, that feature is, is what needs to be supported. So, and that, that feature is not specific to a version of LTI. It's, it was just sort of added separately, but it, it's version independent of LTI. Okay, great, thank you.